what I've noticed with the 2022 midterm elections is that you're starting to really see some resistance from within the Republican Party to Donald Trump, uh, which is encouraging to me. Um, not necessarily because if Ron DeSantis were to win, I think that's like better. Um, I think that politically he could be worse than Donald Trump and more dangerous. Uh, but in terms of it being better for democracy, I do think that DeSantis challenging Trump and beating Trump is actually good. Um, not because I think that he wouldn't be fascistic if he were to become president. I think that that's, uh, that's, certain, that's a certainty. Um, but what I'm anticipating is the situation, or what I'm hoping for, I should say, is the situation where DeSantis challenges Trump and he beats Trump. And then because Trump is so angry, well, he cries fraud. And if you are saying that a majority of the GOP base that just opted for DeSantis over you, that was fraudulent, well, his claims of fraud are going to look a lot more flimsy among the GOP's base, at least. So I want to see factionalization. I want to see some real claws come out against Donald Trump. And I think that for the first time in a while, we're starting to see that. So I haven't watched this yet, but uh, The Daily Wire shared this. Uh, Candace Owens uh, reveals how her perspective of Trump has shifted since the end of his presidency. What I'm saying is that Trump needs to take a good look in the mirror and he needs to exercise a tiny bit, of hum uh, a tiny bit more humility when he gets something wrong. So this is The Daily Wire people coming out and saying... We don't want Trump anymore. Uh, ben Shapiro did the same thing where he directly criticized Donald Trump. And on top of that, um, Matt Walsh is not mentioning Trump's name, but he's alluding to the fact that all of the Republican Party is bad except for the Florida Republican Party inadvertently uh, or not inadvertently, implicitly is the word I'm looking for, endorsing Ron DeSantis. Um, and now you have the Washington Examiner here um, saying, act accordingly. A conservative Washington Examiner calls on GOP to, dr to dump Trump, citing his chaos and dishonor. You have Fox News publishing this op-ed by Liz Peek. Ron DeSantis is the new Republican Party leader. Republicans are ready to move on without Donald Trump. And... Then you see uh, Oliver Dossi for CNN Business saying it is not an accident. Murdoch's media empire celebrates DeSantis as future of GOP after midterms. So you see the Daily Wire, you see Fox News and Murdoch's empire all making a pretty sharp shift towards DeSantis. And they are essentially handing DeSantis their support on a silver platter. So if he doesn't challenge Donald Trump, that would be very stupid. I know that challenging trump right now according to the polls looks bad uh but he has the media apparatus behind him so if he doesn't take up this opportunity he's an idiot because somebody else can emerge that the gop by base likes more than him um so we'll watch a little bit of um of this here i, I want to see her reasoning here but you see that turn they're turning on trump um and i think that this is them trying to uh prime the base to leave Donald Trump finally. Will it work? I don't know, but I hope. Trump actually got upset with me because, and here's the great irony, the richest irony, the Daily Beast ran a headline regarding that live Instagram that you just heard from me. And the headline was, Tr Candace Owens says Trump is pro-vax because he's too old to understand the internet. I never once called Trump too old. I did never want to say that Trump could not understand the internet. And yet somehow he got that information and believed it to be true. He thought that I said that he was too old and that he couldn't understand the internet and did not quite get the information that actually. I mean, I remember the quote. Didn't she basically say that? Um, either way, it seems like he reacted negatively to that. Um, and we'll see what she says. Thing was a defense of him so that his supporters would still believe in him. Not only was he just mad, by the way, he then, during a golf session with some mutual friends of ours, had a person next to him who was egging this on, saying to Trump, and I know this because, again, this is a mutual friend, aren't you mad at Candace? Aren't you mad at Candace? Aren't you mad at Candace? And eventually he was like, yeah, I'm so mad at Candace. I'm so mad at Candace. And this got back to me that he was upset with me, that he was angry at me. And the next time that I saw him, he was quite rude to me. He was actually 
rude to me. Based. I'm telling you this personal story because I think it is something that made me for the first time question him as a person. So you have an individual that spent... The only time you begin to question him as a person is when he's rude to you, not all of the other terrible things that he does. Jesus Christ. So many conservatives are just shamelessly self-centered. And if it affects them directly, that's when they're like, uh, okay, now I can I can reevaluate the situation. Uh, but still, this is interesting because Donald Trump, it shows you how petulant he is, how big of a man baby he is. Uh, because, I mean, look, if you want to run for president again, you can't burn bridges, especially with people in media. But he's just shitting on them uh and he i guess he's expecting their loyalty um but to him like disloyalty is probably one of the biggest sins so yeah ariana says i i I like imagining a civil war on the right yeah i think that maybe cracks are starting to form we'll see how much right-wing media kind of eggs on these tensions between him and desantis but certainly they really don't want trump anymore and i don't i don't blame them Not only is Trump a loser for them electorally, he's genuinely bad for democracy, and they probably don't want to keep pretending that the election was stolen from Trump because they all know that that's not what happened. He lost fair and square. Uh, But, uh, I mean, they've got to be sick of him, right? There's defending you, right? And that individual gave you a completely kind and fair interview. You said something yourself that your base didn't like. And you somehow transformed that into something that I did wrong. That's unacceptable. That is, that is not being a leader. That is not owning things that you did wrong. That is not owning that you misunderstood something about your base. That's not growing. That's not developing. In fact, he should have tried to understand why the base was so upset with him, which would have led to the fact that his base is not pro-COVID vaccine. It's that- uh, ironically, like the one thing that got the base to turn against him was uh, him being right for once. Uh, saying the vaccines are good. And we know that the reason why he said that is because it's all about him. He wants to be able to uh, take credit for the vaccines, and I don't blame him. He can get some of the credit. Um, It saved hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives. So I I understand why he wants to take credit for that. But I just, it's so interesting that the one time in his life, maybe, that he actually is correct, that's when all the pushback comes. What a world. I understood that. I could have told him that. But at that moment, I realized that he's not listening. Who is this guy next to him trying to egg him on to be angry at me for trying to defend him? Has he ever listened, though? And to be fair, I I, th- I would agree with her assessment that by trying to rationalize his pro-vax stance, she was trying to defend him. Um, it wasn't a very good defense, but it was a defense nonetheless. But I just love how now she's like, oh, he doesn't listen. Uh He's really, uh, he's making it personal. It's just, it's hilarious. It's like, yeah, where have you been, Candace? We've all seen this, but uh, I mean, you, uh, you were grifting off of him, so you couldn't admit it. But now that the Daily Wire is trying to push, uh, I don't know if they're, they're pushing DeSantis as explicitly as the Murdoch empire is, but they're pushing a not Trump narrative, which is effectively the same because who else would be able to challenge Trump but DeSantis? Say that he's not a shill to say, no, actually, I think that he genuinely does support the vaccines. He did genuinely support the vaccines. So all of this going on made me, again, question him if he was becoming too angry, which is to say that when Trump went into the election in 2016, he was having fun, right? He was naming people, giving them fun names, enjoying the base, having a good time. I would even say in 2020, you could feel the energy. It was electric. I think after the 2020 election and because of the shock of all the things that happened and the answers that we never really feel that we got, this like sinking realization that we might be actually losing our country, I think that it pushed him into an angry space where he doesn't trust anybody, where he doesn't listen to anybody, where he's, he's almost likely to believe that everybody's trying to turn their back on him and stab him in the back. And again, I don't believe that that's leadership, but I never spoke on that because I thought to myself, I I think that that's a lot of ego that Trump is having right now. Really? But maybe I'm being egotistical. Maybe Trump egotistical? What? what? Donald J. Trump? Him being egotistical? By the way, I'll turn off dog cam because we're just looking at Poopy's butt. Uh, he's very clearly camera shy right now. So, um, by the way, 
when was this posted? November 9th, the day after the election. So I need people to understand that this is all very calculated. The right really wants the base to abandon Donald Trump. Um, now, I'm, I'm done with Candace. Let, let's get to some of these uh, these other outlets here. So the conservative Washington Examiner called on the Republican Party to dump former President Donald Trump during an autopsy of Tuesday's disastrous midterms. While there are still still votes to be counted, an expected red wave never made its way to, um, to shore. Can I just read the article instead of uh, Mediaites? Let's see. Okay, so this is apparently an editorial uh, board op-ed here. So voters show they want sanity and don't want Trump. Wow, that's uh, they're saying it, which uh, you know, good for them. But just look a little bit closer, especially at the races for governor, and the pattern emerges. Florida was a refuge of sanity when the world went mad. Governor Ron DeSantis. Actually, the opposite is happening, by the way. Um, Governor Ron DeSantis said in his victory speech Tuesday night, we have embraced freedom. That's hilarious coming from Ron DeSantis. So Florida voters love the message. And whereas then President Donald Trump barely beat Joe Biden by three points in the state only two years ago, DeSantis crushed his opponent 20 points on Tuesday. Other Republican governors who brought order instead of chaos also won. So uh, Trump's handpicked candidates flopped. Um, so what's the what's the main uh, conclusion. An election that leaves the House and Senate so closely divided may seem like it does not send a clear message, but this one does. These midterm elections have made it crystal clear that voters want to move past the chaos and dishonor of the 45th president. They want the security and sanity that a competent and effective leader can provide. The Republican Party needs to recognize that too and act accordingly. I would love to read the comments here. Uh, I don't know if they have any comments, but they're straight up just saying it's time to dump Trump. Now, uh, this is from Fox News here. Uh, the biggest loser, Donald Trump, who's handpicked loyalist candidates in a number of races, struggled to beat vulnerable Democrats. Once again, the former president may have cost Republicans control of the Senate in a year when it was theirs to lose. Many will conclude on the basis of the midterm uh, 2022 results that the Republican Party is ready to move on without Donald Trump as its leader. So many people are saying, um, and again, bringing in DeSantis. Um, let's get to the final paragraph, because that's usually when they summarize everything. Let us hope that the millions of Americans who have supported Trump in 2016 and again in 2020 begin to see that his time has passed. If they like his policies, they need to move their allegiance to Ron DeSantis, who has never lost a campaign and who emerged the big winner in these midterms. Um, so, yeah. Once again, they're saying, all right, we love Trump and his policies, but it's time to move on. What do the comments say, though? There's quite a bit. I voted for Trump twice and would reluctantly vote for him again if he were the Republican nominee. That being said, he is truly interested in what is best for America and the Republican Party. He should step aside um, if he is truly interested in what is best for America and the Republican Party. He should step aside and put his support behind DeSantis. So this one has 344 likes to 23 dislikes. That's, I mean, we're talking about Fox News's core audience here. Um, agree 100%. Great article, and I agree. I voted for Trump twice, but with the fight that we're in now for the heart of our country, we need someone with less ego to be a leader. Wow. So the 24 election has, uh, has to be more than uh, running a candidate bent on restoring his popularity. So they're finally beginning to wake up little by little. This might not be like the dam bursting open, but this is at least the trickle where you start to see the winds change and, you know, some some cracks in the dam. I'm thankful for four years that Trump gave us, but I don't believe he is electable any longer. I love to see this. Um, now, just getting to the shift from Murdoch in general. So, um, Rupert Murdoch, the media mogul who controls some of the most powerful organs in conservative media, appeared to make clear Wednesday that he would prefer to cast aside former President Donald Trump in favor of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as a leader of the party. The New York Post, a tabloid Murdoch controls, hailed DeSantis' election night uh, uh, election night victory on its front page Wednesday morning. Uh, so the New York Post um, headline was De Future. Uh, alongside a photo of DeSantis and his family celebrating their major win in the Sunshine State. And I've just got to say, they're kind of shameless, right? They're all shifting to DeSantis from Donald Trump. They're all coming out with these op-eds. Candace Owens is all of a sudden right now, a day after the election, 
sharing how Trump was rude to her. And you can tell that management is instructing them to do this. Um, isn't that interesting? Like for me, I don't have a management. It's just me. I uh, am one of two people that runs my show. Um, and whatever we want to say, we do say. We don't have anything from executives telling us, hey, Mike, now it's time to shift to this. Like I just say what's on my mind. But you see all of these propagandists taking their marching orders and like good little stooges, they're doing it. But you know what? I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm glad that the uh, New York Post, Fox News, the Washington Examiner, the Daily Wire, I'm glad that all of these outlets are turning on Donald Trump because he is a threat to democracy. And honestly, if GOP voters shift to Ron DeSantis from Trump, I think we have a chance. Not because I think that DeSantis is any less destructive, as I emphasized earlier. I think that if DeSantis were to be the GOP's nominee, um, I hope he loses. I'd fight like hell against him. Uh, even if Joe Biden was the nominee, and I wouldn't be very excited about that. But just having him beat Donald Trump in a GOP primary would do wonders. Because again, if Trump doesn't go quietly into the night after he's defeated by a fellow Republican, that kind of secures it. That's uh, That's it for him, right? He can't cry fraud. He lost fair and square. And he's not going to be able to admit that he lost fair and square to Ron, quote, de sanctimonious. So it's going to be interesting to watch, folks. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.